Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is something that has been very, very requested. So I've actually been asked many times, what are the all-rounder carefree leathers from Hermes and could I rank them? So that is what I've done. I have, two, pretty much I have two categories here. So I have a category of scratch resistant leathers and then I'm going to rank those leathers in accordance with what's the most scratch resistant to what still is scratch resistant, but you know, falls lower, like, you know, is at the bottom but it's not quite literal at the bottom because they still are in that category. But then I'm gonna have a category of leathers that are not exactly scratch resistant and I'm going to rank them to being the least scratch resistant all the way through to, you know, somewhat being the most, but still fall into the category of being not so scratch resistant. So it is a kind of a bit of a weird way of going about it, but I just, I felt like that was the best way of ranking it because otherwise I ended up with like 20 leathers and it always, it kind of is going to become like a bit of a blur because when, yeah, when you get to the bottom of the list, yeah, you're going to assume that they're not that scratch resistant, but I kind of felt like both categories should be broken up because you kind of have a, you have around about like the way I look at it, you have about nine to 10 leathers that um, are, pretty much you are going to get scratches, right? But the, some of those leathers may not be as bad as the others. But then you have a category of leathers where I've got about, you know, 11 here that um, still are scratch resistant, but then you'll have ones that are so really ridiculously scratch resistant, but then you'll have ones that, you know what, maybe the, it, there's still that, you know, slight chance, but it's still scratch resistant. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, we're way of going about it, but otherwise I would just have 20 leathers and it's it, and it's really hard to distinguish because it's just going to become like a blur. Once you kind of get to like midway through the list, people are just going to go, okay, well, these probably don't really matter because they're in the middle, but they do. So it was a better way was to break them up into scratch resistant leathers versus delicate leathers. Okay, so um, yeah, before I dive into today's video, if you are new to my channel and you love all things luxury, then I would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button below and also the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I upload every weekend and then I sometimes try to do a midweek upload. Diving right in. Okay, we're going to start off with that category of leathers where I've got about 11 leathers here that are scratch resistant. Okay, and the very best, the, the most scratch resistant, most durable leather that... Um, Hermes has. Now, let me just say as well, some of these leathers are discontinued, but I'm not going to like, I, I still, I'm really just going to uh, rate them all because we know that we can get some of these leathers in the pre-loved market anyway. So if you know that you really want to get a scratch resistant leather, then this video might be helpful for you because you'll go, you know what, I'm only going to look for this leather. I know I'm only going to get it pre-loved. I know I'm going to have to look at stores that shop, uh, you know, that stock vintage, um, consignment items and that kind of thing. Very first leather is Ardennis leather and Ardennis is discontinued. I did once upon a time own a Ardennis Kelly 32 and can I tell you that that bag was made in 1999. I bought it about six years ago and it looked like it had not been used. The only sign of wear on that bag was the hardware. Otherwise, the leather itself was absolutely impeccable. Like you would not believe it really looked like it was still a new bag. If you just didn't look at the hardware, it still looked brand new. The hardware did have scratches, but that's expected when the bag's, you know, made in 1999. And um, yeah, I bought it like six odd years ago. So that's like, you know, 20, 2015, that kind of thing. So yeah, it was like 16 year old bag and it looked amazing. So Ardennis leather is a very structured, sturdy leather. It is not as, like, it's not as um, structured as Epsom leather. Actually, you know what? I would say Ardennis is more structured than Epsom. I would see, yeah, I would say that because Ardennis is actually thicker than Epsom leather. Um, so it is actually a bit heavier, um, but yeah, it is thicker. So it is actually more structured than Epsom. It's just that Epsom is typically made in like, um, cellular bags. So that's why it looks ridiculously structured. But I feel like if you made, like, if I were to ever handle a cellular Ardennis Kelly, I feel like that would feel far more structured than that of an Epsom. You know, this is like personal opinion. Also that it does have a grain as well to it. So that's what gives it that level of scratch resistance. It has a very pronounced or has a quite a pronounced grain. I wouldn't say as pronounced as Togo, but it's still got a pronounced grain. It is almost like that of a Togo grain, I would say, except it's just on a firmer, more structured uh, leather surface. So that's 
kind of the difference that it has with Togo. I would say the best way to describe our Dennis is like a hybrid between box calf and Togo leather. That's probably the best way to describe it. Also, um, our Dennis was discontinued and then it was replaced by Vache Leger, which is pretty much the same, but you know, it would have been a different, maybe different calf that they were using, whatever, uh, or a slightly different tumble process, but it was replaced by that leather. And Vache Leger is pretty much in this like same same i would say that they're both up there in the very top robust leathers maybe you would etch vache lije just a little bit down below our dennis and you know i would say perhaps if we were to really be technical then um you would put vache lije as number two and our dennis as number one in terms of the most durable scratch resistant leathers so yeah we've pretty much covered one and two in the same nutshell right there okay number three in terms of scratch resistant leathers is togo so togo very scratch resistant. And I do have an example here this time around, and that is my Togo Birkin 30 in E2. So if you look up close, it has quite a pronounced grain to it. However, Togo uh, grains can slightly sort of vary. Sometimes you get really, really small grains like this one, which I feel like it's a pretty small grain, but then sometimes you can get slightly larger ones, not as large as say Clem the Clemence grain, but just, you know, sometimes you get really small ones like this. Sometimes you get them a little bit larger. Um, usually when they are slightly larger grain, that's when you sometimes see that veining happening. Um, but mine is the very small Togo grains and I don't have any veining on my handbag whatsoever. This is actually, um, I think, what stamp is this? I think this is a 2018 made handbag, if I'm not mistaken, because I got this in at the very beginning of 2019 from the store. Yeah, it's a C stamp. It's a C stamp ha handbag. I've been told that other people that own C stamp bags in Togo have also said the same thing, that that stamp is like their best Togo leather ever. But Togo still in general is very, very scratch resistant and it's attributed to the fact of that grain. That grain really helps to create that scratch resistant surface. Also, it is a slightly like, you know, it's a more supple sort of leather. It's not super soft. It's just a bit more like it is still supple, but it does still hold structure as well. However, the heavier the bag, the more that Togo does start to get a bit soft and supple. But nonetheless, no matter what, even if it's been well used and well loved, Togo is still up there in that top five of most scratch resistant leathers for Hermes. So moving on to number four would be Fjord or Ford. I don't know how to say it. I didn't Google it. I didn't have time. Kind of similar to Togo in its grain, except it is a bigger grain. And because it's a bigger grain, you always see graining on that kind of leather because of the, the grain being bigger. So that's sometimes what people don't like about that leather as well. Again, it is also discontinued and it is actually heavier than Togo. Nonetheless, very, very scratch resistant too. Next one would be Clemence. Clemence leather, again, very similar to Togo. It does have a bigger grain too, like I was saying with the previous leather, Fajord. Um, but Clemence, the grain is actually a little bit more flat. So even though it's got a bigger grain uh, and it has grains, it's just that the grains are just a little bit more smoothed off. So it's like, it's like with Togo, it's kind of got like this like slight like bump to it, just that Clemence has got more of like a flatness to it. Um, and that's why it gets more of a matte appearance. You don't really get a sheen, whereas Togo, you get a slight sheen with a light reflecting off that slight curvature on the grain. But Clemence, very flat, but again, very, very scratch resistant as well. And it's really attributed to the fact that it's a grained leather. So you'll probably find that there's a bit of a trend here is that grained leathers, natural grains. We're talking natural grains because all of these leathers I've mentioned have a natural grain that occurs through the tumble process that Hermes uses for their leathers um, to create each individual leather style. Um, yeah, all those natural grained leathers are very, very scratch resistant. So, you know, if you are looking for scratch resistant bags, if you stay in that natural grain, you'll find that you're, you're going to be good, you know. One is Evergreen. Uh, evergreen leather is something that you don't really see that often. It's not exactly discontinued, but they're very selective in which handbags actually use evergreen leather on. Um, for reference, I actually have a video on my channel, which leathers are available for which bag, and I will link that down below. So if you really want to know what leathers are being offered in what bags, that video would be worth watching if you want to really educate yourself. Sometimes things do change a little bit with Hermes, like uh, Chev leather has come back on Constance. I would say Evergreen is more st structured in than Togo leather. 
Uh, not as structured as our Dennis, but yeah, definitely more structured than Togo. It has a smaller grain, so I don't have an example of it. It has a smaller grain, um, but that grain attributes it to being scratch resistant. But that smaller grain and being more structured, uh, a less pronounced grain, is typically what starts to now fall into that category of being it's still scratch resistant, but it's just not as scratch resistant as those more pronounced grains that are on Togo, that are on Clemence, that are on Fajor, that are on Ardennes and that kind of thing. So it's like kind of a bit of a rule of thumb, smaller, flatter grains on a very structured surface can, can mean that it may be a little less scratch resistant. So Chef Leather has, um, it's a goat skin actually. I haven't really specifically said what leathers are like what, um, because I just, some of them I couldn't even remember, but I just specifically remember that uh, Chev is actually a goat skin leather. There's Chev Mysore, Chev de Cromandel, and then there's a new one that they come out with as well. I've forgotten the name, it's completely escaped me, but it's actually a very new version of Chev. Uh, Chev Sh Shamkilla, Camilla, Kemkilla? <laughs> Sounds terrible. But yeah, Chev, there's like a few options. Uh, Chev Cromandel, de Cromandel, is. Um, discontinued and you don't see it anymore um but chev mysore is the most common one but yeah the thing with this leather like even though there is some variants of it really the only difference with the variants is like the graining that sort of thing uh which is decremandal it's got an obvious grain on it but this grain it is scratch resistant but it's quite it's flat and because of the actual leather, the goat skin, it has a bit of a sheen to it. So the thing is, is that it's relatively scratch resistant, but if you do happen to scratch it with like a natural nail, that's usually where it can happen, you can sort of see the scratch in some lights, like because of the sheen. So that's kind of like, it is scratch resistant. It's, it's not exactly like the most easiest thing, easiest leather to scratch. Um, but kind of the thing is that with that leather, it's mostly disguised when you do accidentally scratch it. So I kind of still put it in there like, you know, relatively somewhat in the middle. Um, and the other thing is that if you do scratch Chev leather, it doesn't rip off the paint, like it doesn't expose paint because that leather goes through a tumble process. It's a natural grain. It's not an artificial grain. So it doesn't rip off the color. Uh, it's, yeah, it's coming in midway. So now we're starting to get to the leathers that, you know, are still, you know, scratch resistant, but they've got some kind of... Things that you have to be a bit mindful of. This one is Evercolor. So Evercolor does have a natural grain, definitely less pronounced than it than Chev, the leather I just mentioned. Um, Evercolor is actually pretty similar to Swift leather, except it does have more of a grain to it. But it is almost sort of smooth. It is almost smooth. So because it has a slight grain, that's what helps it to be a bit more scratch resistant. Now we're in that category of smooth leathers. Evercolor starts that category essentially, but it still has a grain to it. It still has a very slight grain to it. But smooth leathers, when you kind of rub it with your finger, like in circular motions, especially when you've just scratched it, say you just scratched your bag and it's Evercolor or even Swift, the best thing that you can do is try to massage it with your finger using the natural oils from your finger. It helps to like bring on the patina process. It's just the natural oils that the, that the leather laps up and it loves, it loves it. Um, and massaging it with your finger in circular motions can help to kind of relax the strain that you've just put on the grain and it can kind of um, put it back to place essentially. That's really the way of you know describing it. And it's because it's a smooth leather that it actually laps up patina, it laps up oils that create the natural patina. Um, but ever color is not the, like, it, because of the grain, that's what makes it that little bit more scratch resistant, but it's not a total smooth leather. So it perhaps doesn't work the same wonders in terms of being able to massage the scratch down like you can with Swift, but I still rank it higher because of the fact that it has a grain does make it that little bit it makes it that little bit more scratch resistant than say a very flat smooth leather like Swift. Okay, so now let's move on to Novillo leather. Novillo is pretty much just like Swift. It is is very, very similar to that of Swift. However, it does have more structure to the bag and does have a little bit more of a grain to it. So Novillo is going to be pretty much the same kind of concept as Swift, I would say. Um, even though it's a bit more structured, it has a little bit more of a grain to it than Swift. It's still the same sort of thing. You got to kind of massage the scratch once it happens to try to bring out the natural oils and relax the tension that you've just created on that grain in the leather. But 
it's still, in my opinion, scratch resistant for, and I've still left it in that category and not put it into the delicate category purely because it's able to be remedied. And leather conditioner is also a big, uh, big attribute as well. Like the biggest thing that you can really do in terms of like the smooth leathers is that you can pretty much self spa them with a really light weight leather conditioner and you can buff it to shine and that will pretty much blend your scratches away. I once upon a time had a Constance in Swift that I bought pre-loved from Japan and it was pretty darn beat up and I managed to pretty much get rid of almost all the scratches on that bag and it was actually in black which is one of the colors that shows scratches the most on smooth leather this one now this is where i'm kind of a bit like i feel like i maybe want to switch this over purely to do with the remedy factor so i'm going to move on to next one being swift and it's going to be the same thing as novillo leather it has pretty much no grain to it it's very smooth so that's why i put novillo above but it is the same thing in terms of how you can actually remedy this leather like if i were to scratch that right now see how it's, it's not showing a scratch is it see i've just scratched that bag with my natural nail but then you just kind of like i really couldn't even see that scratch come up but that's also to do with the leather but um, you just kind of rub it around and then it blends it in. Look, if I were to sheen, look, if I just like tilt this bag around, yeah, you can kind of see some scratches there, but I haven't self sparred this bag in a while. It is due for one. But I just feel like even though, yeah, maybe the scratches are there. When you look in certain light, maybe you can see them. But overall, it's not bad. Like, like. It's not. Like, look, it, it looks great. In my opinion, that still looks fine. No one's going to walk around in studio white lights and go like this to their bag. <gasps> Who's there scratches? <gasps> Can people see this? Is there a studio light following me in the street? Like, it ain't happening. People don't notice it. I don't notice it. To me, I feel like the smooth leathers don't get enough credit because one of the great things about them is that when you do scratch them, none of the color comes off. Um, you're not left with having to color, uh, color touch up scratches. The only time that you would is general corner wear. And that's just really purely because after a while, when you keep beating up the corners, color is going to eventually wear off. So I'll link down below my video where I show my, my like personal uh, leather care routine sort of thing. I'll link that down below. You might find that helpful. But yeah, I just find Smooth leathers are really absolutely remarkable and do not get enough credit. Um, now we're going to move on to the very last smooth leather. And, you know, we are at that bottom of the list because this is going to be like, this is more based on like uh, scratch resistance. We already know that those grained leathers at the very top there that have the very pronounced grains pretty much can't go wrong. You won't have to rub it with your finger. You won't really have to like buff to shine to disguise the scratches or anything. So Vo Jonathan is pretty much the same as Swift has absolutely no grain, no visible grain like what Swift does, but it does have a little bit more structure to it. So you've got like a Novillo, which is like Swift as well, but it has more structure and has a little bit more of a grain. Less than Evercolor, but more than Swift. Then though Jonathan is no grain like Swift, but it's got a little bit more structure to it. The thing is though, because it's got a little bit more structure and it has no grain, structure is generally what can um, can potentially put it to more risk in terms of getting scratches because when you've got like structure to a bag and you've got pressure against something firm, you're more likely to cause a deeper scratch than what you are when you put pressure to something that's soft, like really soft, whereas Swift is ridiculously buttery soft. So that's why Vo Jonathan does come below Swift um, but it's the same remedy. The last leather that I've got in my still scratch resistant leathers, but it falls at the very bottom and it's probably a pretty controversial one because this is this has got a lot of conflicting opinion. A lot of people will say otherwise, but I say differently purely because of my own personal experience with the leather with multiple handbags and even my current bags. And that is Epsom leather. So it is still scratch resistant. So we're not in that category of leathers that are pretty much not like not very scratch resistant at all. Um, but Epsom is prone to scratches. In my opinion, it is the least scratch resistant in terms of these like you know uh, less delicate leathers um and the reason that i say this is for a few reasons firstly epsom when it does get scratched which seems to be more prone to scratches when you do have natural nails like mine and that's why i've had bad experiences so the thing with epsom leather is that when it does get scratched it does expose like the primer color underneath 
So that's pretty much one of the biggest downfalls with Epsom. And it is relative to the fact if you have natural nails like me, which I find natural nails is easier to sort of scratch Epsom. Um, but then again, if you know, some other leathers, even if you brush it against like something that's rough, it wouldn't get scratched. But whereas Epsom, if you do brush it against something that's pretty rough, it would very likely get scratched. Um, and that's pretty much the main reason that I rank it, you know, the very least in terms of you know, being scratch resistant, it's still scratch resistant because yeah, I can do this and it doesn't get scratched. Um, but it's more to do with how it gets remedied. So firstly, you can't really remedy it yourself. When Epsom does get scratched, you can't rub it and massage the grain back because it's actually an artificial grain. It's not, um, it's not actually a natural grain. So the grain that they've got on here is actually a heat pressed grain. So it's artificially made that way. And because of that, that's why you can't actually uh, get the leather to move with you and massage back into like its place, like the grain placement. You can't do that because the grain's artificial. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't lap up patina. This doesn't get like, it pretty much doesn't get a patina because of the fact that it's got a heat press grain that gives it kind of like a laminate surface sort of thing. Um, so that's why I rank it low is purely because it's difficult to remedy it yourself difficult to remedy with just conditioner and if you do scratch epsom and it lifts off the color you pretty much got to spar it and it's got to be color touched up it has to be color touched up by an artisan that is the only way to remedy an actual scratch on epsom leather there are some levels of scratch that's worse than others like you get a scratch that's more of a surface level where it kind of kicks over the grain like it's a bit of a kickback um, i even have it on this one which is a bit hard to show on camera anyway but it's like a bit of a kickback scratch where you can see the you can see how like the artificial grain's been moved with the scratch, but it hasn't actually exposed the primer color underneath. But then you've got that kind of scratch where when you do scratch it to the worst extent, it actually lifts color off completely. So at, a, at an actual surface level, yes, Epsom is very scratch resistant. Yes, I could do this and it would leave a scratch, right? But if you were to actually scratch it deeper by accident, like you're doing something quite quickly and you're using a lot of force behind your nail by accident, Epsom, there's really nothing you can do to remedy it yourself. It has to go, it has to go to a spa. It has to go to an artisan to be fixed up and repaired. So that's why I rank it low. So it's a bit of a difficult one. Like it's a bit tricky because I can still understand why people say, oh yeah, it's very scratch resistant because yeah, at this level it, it is scratch resistant. But if you do manage to scratch it, which I feel personally with natural nails, it isn't all that hard to do because when you think of the ways that you do actually scratch your bag, it's usually when you're being clumsy, um, you know, uh, you're getting like you're getting things out of your car, you're grabbing your shopping, like it's usually happening at times when you're not meaning to, and then all of a sudden you're gonna scratch on your bag, but. It happens to all of us with our handbags. It's just that some leathers are more scratch resistant than others, but it's in those circumstances that I feel like Epsom is where it just doesn't fare so well. Okay, so now we're in that category of delicate leathers. So I realized that the camera started to get further away from me. My son started bashing the table with a drink bottle, I think. The first would be that you're almost in that category of leathers that are scratch resistant and they can be remedied. But then you get down to the bottom of the list and it pretty much can't be remedied anymore, if you get what I'm kind of saying. And I think it'll make more sense when I say this next leather. So the next leather ranked the first one in terms of being, um, you know, uh, least delicate. It's the least delicate. So if we were really continuing on, it would just continue on after um, Epsom leather. And that would be Berenia in the Smooth and the Forberg. Pretty much the both of them. It is pretty prone to scratches. It can get scratched. Um, it's pretty darn easy to scratch Berenia. Even in the Forberg option, which has the grain, it's still pretty easy to scratch it. And that's because they're both, it's unfinished leathers. Like Berenia is unfinished leather. But the thing is, is that because Berenia is an unfinished leather that's uh, really oil soaked, it's been vegetable tanned, um, like it's been tanned with a multiple amount of like vegetable oils and, and whatnot, that sort of thing. Um, because of that fact that it's so oil soaked, when you do actually rub it with your finger to massage the scratch out, it the patina comes in and it just blends away. The bag would get older and more and more patina would come in. The scratches would blend even easier, like pretty much without even having to touch it, they would just blend away. So that's why it still comes in like 
pretty high in terms of like it's in the delicate leather category, but it's just really up there in wa- in the in the way that it can be remedied. Those scratches can be remedied out. Uh, the next one would be box calf and shamonix. Step shamonix is usually the one that will be in colors, so you might see it in like rouge H, um, like navy. You'll see it in the natural state as well. Same same. They are same 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 sort of leather. Same thing pretty much. Um, this again, same concept. It is pretty scratch prone. You can almost virtually scratch it just by breathing on it, but it can be blended out. However, it doesn't blend as well as Berenia. And if it's a new box calf, very new, fresh from the store, it pretty much will not blend because there is no patina to that surface yet. The key with box calf is age and the natural oils from your hands and natural oils from the environment soaking into the leather. And that's what makes it able to be remedied when you do scratch it. So it's very scratch prone. It's very easy to scratch it, but the older the bag, the more patina it has, the more it can be remedied. The newer the bag, the newer the box calf can't be remedied so soon. You're pretty much going to have to live with the scratch for a little while until more patina comes in. And then that scratch will kind of blend away. You can sort of like massage it. Um, and it's just that you're going to find that when you're massaging that scratch, you know, with your finger, it's probably, there, there will be a slight improvement. That's for sure. There's definitely going to be an improvement, but it, depending on the severity of the scratch though, it's pretty much going to stay. Next one is Tadalac. The Tadalac is has got a transparent glossy coat to it. It is not an unfinished leather like Berenia and box calf, Shimonix, that sort of thing. It's actually a completely finished leather. And that transparent glossy co- top coat is the finish to that leather. So it doesn't behave in the way where natural oils um, and patina comes into play where it disguises it. That's not the way that that works with Tadalac. Tadalac is very, very prone to scratches. I once upon a time had a Tadalac Constance and yeah, it was already scratched when I got it. The only thing is that with Tadalac, even though it's a finished leather, because it's so glossy, that transparent top coat, that is what makes the scratch kind of not be so obvious because of the gloss to the surface. However, in certain ways that you would tilt the bag, you could see the scratch. You can kind of blend the scratch away with leather conditioner. The leather conditioner just kind of really uh, brings out more shine to the bag. It's not so much of a patina blend, like with oils. It's not really that because of that transparent top coat. It's more to do with the gloss coming in and buffing it to shine it makes the surface super duper glossy and you just wouldn't be able to see the scratch because it pretty much blinds you because it is that ridiculously shiny and glossy. The next one is Evercalf. So Evercalf, it's a structured, structured finished leather, doesn't have a glossy top coat like Tadalac does, um, but that's kind of the reason why it's lower than Tadalac. So it has a lot of the similarities to Tadalac, but it's, it's missing that transparent glossy top coat. It's still a finished leather. So it can sort of get a bit of like a patina blend to blend the scratches, but it is still relatively prone to scratches purely because in the same way that Tadalac is, they're both prone to scratches. It's missing that glossy top coat. So you don't really get that kind of disguise to it, if you know what I'm sort of saying. I think when I put a picture on the screen, it'll let me to make, make it a little bit more sense. So it's more of a matte, sort of a bit of a matte finish. And matte finishes on a very smooth, firm, structured surface, it is, it is pretty difficult to kind of blend, you know. Um, leather conditioner might bring out a bit of buff to shine, but... And it might help to kind of disguise it, but it's not really a guarantee. So it, it's starting, we're starting to get low in that list in terms of being able to remedy the scratch because of the characteristic of the leather. This one would be Veau Monsieur. Now this is uh, a newer leather to Hermes. It's not really available in a lot of bags. It's in like the Birkenselia and the Constance pretty much. Um, Veau Monsieur is, uh, again, a very smooth leather, um, but it's got a bit of a shine to it like Evercalf does, but not as glossy as Tadalac. So I would say that Veau Monsieur is pretty much the same concept as Evercalf. There's nothing really else I can say. They're pretty much hand in hand in terms of like scratch resistance. They're not really that scratch resistant at all. And there's not a lot you can really do to remedy the scratch if you do scratch it. The best way probably with both of those, the Evercalf and the Veau Monsieur, is being able to rub it with your finger in circular motions as soon as the scratch happens. Next one is Veau Butler. Now, Vaux Butler is like, uh, same thing again, but it is far more obvious the scratch. Uh, I think that probably was like the biggest thing I could distinguish, like when we're starting to go down this list, is that 
the leathers that I'm pretty much going to talk about now, it's that there's not much you can do to remedy it, if anything at all. And if you can't remedy it, um, which is harder to do, it's pretty much, you know, we're getting into the near impossible area of being able to disguise and remedy the scratch. It's obvious. Like the scratch is obvious. In Vogue Butler leather, it, it just stands out like a sore thumb. If you do manage to scratch it, it's just going to be like a, like a cat claw sort of thing. The best thing you can do to kind of, re kind of remedy it is when it, as soon as it happens is to massage the leather so you can relax the kickback. But it's, it's probably you're probably going to be screwed either way. And that scratch is probably going to stand out like a bit of a sore thumb. Um, Vogue Butler is a finished leather and it's a smooth leather. So uh, patina is probably not really going to be something that's really going to take it. It's not really going to take it on board. Um, I think that, you know, after time goes on a long, long time, yeah, it'll probably get some level of patina. Like we're talking a long time, like we're maybe like 10 years and that might help to disguise the scratch. Or you just really scratch the absolute crap out of the bag and then all, it just all blends because, because of that. The last few left, um, sombrero. So sombrero, it's kind of like a velvet finish and that's probably why it's, it really is down. Like there's only a couple others left. And the biggest thing is that with sombrero, because of that velvet matte finish, when you do scratch it, it ain't going anywhere. It's not shiny. It's matte. Uh, it doesn't really get patina because it's matte. Uh, so patina is a glossy look to the leather. Sombrero pretty much doesn't get that. It doesn't get a glossy look to the leather. So scratch kickback is pretty much going to remain. Massage it maybe with your finger. Maybe it'll work. Chances are it probably won't and you are still going to have a scratch on the bag and it's going to show in lighting. These 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 last leathers, don't go near them like with a 10-foot pole if you are like scratch-a-phobe. Um, even any of these delicate leathers, if you are a scratch-a-phobe, don't go near this, these leathers at all, pretty much from Berenia all the way through down. Second last one is Popork. Um, Popork is a discontinued leather as well. Um, actually, technically it's not because it has come back recently in um, like SLGs, mini, like the little Kelly charm, even in a Birkin, and I think even in a Kelly, in a Celia Birkin. But yeah, it was discontinued, so it has come back, but it's not like come back like, you know, like it's not Togo, it's not Clement, it's not available in that way. It's still very darn rare. Um, but Popork, unfinished leather, um the color is only natural so it's only natural and that is the thing is that with it when you do scratch it you are going to get like a lighter cast on the scratch uh i feel like you know um in time in a long long time po pork can develop a patina and that's what can blend it in but the thing is that with po pork the patina takes a long time to get even like it is how do I kind of describe it? Because it is a very matte, raw, unfinished surface, the patina would take forever to get even. You would probably get patina in areas. It is also not water resistant. It is very prone to water damage. Um, so not only is it pretty unscratch resistant, it is pretty unwater resistant as well. And then the very, very last one is Vache Natural. So Vache Natural. I love this leather because it is so structured and firm, but my God, is it not scratch proof? <laughs> my God, no, it's not. It is pretty much like, uh, I would say it's like sombrero. Uh, it's not velvet. It's still smooth, but because it's always in natural color, the scratches cannot hide. You cannot hide them because it's always in a natural color. It's not in black. It's not in a dark color. So you don't get that eye trickery sort of thing happening. It is just natural raw leather in its natural state, very um, structured and firm. And when you scratch it, there's nothing you can really do about it. But that being said, Vache Natural can get patina. It takes a very long freaking time. And again, it is, doesn't, there's no guarantee it's going to be natural and it's also not water resistant either. So it really is like po pork. They're pretty much hand in hand, except po pork has like, it's a smooth leather, but it kind of has like a bit of a like uh, texture to it because it's pig skin. Whereas Vache Natural is just smooth as a baby's butt, but not as soft as a baby's butt. It is, it is hard, very hard. Uh, but I love Vache Natural. I actually really love the leather. So I, I just like the fact that it's so raw and structured and natural that I feel like it just kind of kind of sings to me a little bit in terms of like being someone who is so like uh, passionate about the Hermes leathers. Um, yeah, that is it. 
that that is it. I have hopefully have explained that well. Hopefully you kind of get where I was kind of going with it. You know that if you are scratchophobe, do avoid all those leathers that I put into the delicate category. But if you are wanting some level of scratch resistant, you know the ranking in terms of those leathers that are scratch resistant. Um, but yeah. If you like this video and you found it very useful and helpful, then please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.